again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Back from vacation. I am. Look how well rested yeah, and tan I am. I know. Um, <laughs> did you have a good trip? Oh I my goodness. Uh, we had an amazing trip. Two weeks, Honduras, Roatan Island. It's a little island and it's this huge diving destination mm. because it's the second largest uh, barrier reef in the world. Okay after Australia, which apparently no one is ever going to be able to visit again. I don't know, they've lost their entire collective minds over yep. on that side of the country, uh, the world. world. And um, so tons of divers, we did a lot of snorkeling, a lot of fishing, eating, you know, great yep. food, uh, got to recharge my batteries. Yep. So yeah. yeah, it's always nice. It's always good to um, get away. Yes. And you know, and it was a, a <laughs> It was quite the adventure, right? The so pre adventure? The pre adventure. So, for those of you who watch the show regularly, you know that uh, my passport had expired. And I uh, only figured that out the Friday before the Thursday that we were supposed to fly. Uh, there was a backlog with passport offices. Uh, so, they were saying, you know, expect up to I 18 think was, weeks, I think you told me. 18 weeks. Which, right? can anybody out there? explain why mm -hmm. anything in the government should be backlogged 18 weeks. Of course, this is the same government that can't process IR uh, tax returns either, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It's just, government. I feel like we're just, you know, sort of in the death throes of the some kind of regime that's collapsing and maybe we could do better at <laughs> point 2.0. But yeah, so um, the Monday, I, I think it was yeah. when we yeah. had our last show together, I had called the governor's office yeah. and left a message. Uh, and on Tuesday, someone called me back and they were like, look, this isn't really within oh, our no. jurisdiction. That was Tuesday. You drove over to Portsmouth. You couldn't do the show because you had to go to Portsmouth. So it was Tuesday and you had pretty much given up. That was the that was the Wednesday, I think, wasn't it? So I think we I think I you went to Portsmouth shows, right? on. We went we to Portsmouth three. on the on Oh, yes, I know. You did go on Monday. We watched your dog. That's why yes. I remember it. And then you you were just... You, so, so the Monday was a disaster, yes. right? Because and that's we, where we were at the gates. And yeah. the guy was like, if you don't have an appointment, and we're like, but you can't get an appointment because we're in this like Phone cycle site. of you know people just... Government you know, telling you, stupid. you need an appointment. Well, I can't get an appointment because you won't answer the phone. Like, that whole thing. So, anyway, long and the short of it is uh, my husband, Louie, contacted Chris Pappas' mm. constituent's office. I at, the, at the direction of the governor's office. Yes. They said they can't do it, but... They can't help. And, actually, Louie had actually submitted the paperwork that Friday before. Mm. So, I think what happened is... Um, on the Friday when we discovered it, Louis came into my office and he said, hey, so there is a service that you can pay $1,000 to and then you get a slot for the interview for the passport, right? And I actually looked at him and I was like, wow, when did America could, turn into, into like third world country? Right. That's you the kind could, of stuff. If you give us a thousand bucks, we'll help you. Well, no, but that, that but it was a private service. Right. So it turns out, as far as we can tell, those people were just literally booking all the slots and then selling them, right? So they had figured out this, like... They figured out there was a demand a and they were making money off of it. Yeah. Wow. And, of course, we were like, no, that's crazy. We can't that's afford a, well, that. Well, that's just crazy. And it does <laughs> and, sound and like not, a scam. Right. And it's not guaranteed. But, you know, I mean, I've traveled a lot and in a lot of third world countries. And that's how stuff works. You know, if you want a passport in some countries, you can meet a guy who works for the passport office, right. who will give you one in a parking lot for, right. you know, $400 or right. whatever, right? But a thousand bucks just for no. the slot. So anyway, so we think what happened is when it went offline, the appointments, right, that you couldn't even get them online, was when they realized the scam was happening and they right. took the whole system down. And then when they put it back up was right when we had contacted everyone and so slots had opened up. So we just genuinely lucked out, yes. right? But whatever, we went to Boston on Wednesday, noon o'clock, we had an appointment, we gave them our paperwork, they said come back at uh, 3 o'clock, we came back at 3 o'clock, they handed us our new passports, which are valid till 31, 2031, and we were like, wow, we can't believe that, we were home by 6, we had to like leave again yep. at 3 o'clock the next morning, and... Um, 
And yeah, so so really grateful. You know, I called the governor's office back and we emailed uh, Chris Pappas's office and we're like, we're not sure who helped how, yep. but thank you. Uh, you know, someone commented on social media and they were like, well, isn't it great to be well connected? And I was like, this I is what you're this is the phone number right. that said constituent service. Right. That, That's this what I is did. what your congressmen and your senators are supposed to be doing for you. This isn't a special, woo, we know the secret phone number to call and get special services, because I'm pretty sure if there was a secret phone number, over to get special services at Chris Patterson's office. <laughs> Carla and I me. would not have it. <laughs> We're not at the top of that list. No. <laughs> also helpful that my husband has a different last name. <laughs> There's something to be said about names not changing, right? <laughs> and then, um, I don't know if you saw, but my other exciting news is my C-SPAN interview came out. I saw it bubbling. Mama. I've been like crazy busy trying to get my house on the market. Oh, yeah, no, I understand. So uh, for folks back home who are interested, it is on my Facebook page, or you can go to C-SPAN Book TV, which is uh, C-SPAN 2. It's about 35 minutes long. Uh, I think I did the best job I've ever done yeah. on television, uh, except that one time when CNN uh, bumped me because <laughs> I didn't go on. I probably did a better job. That's than right. That. That's right. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was really it was really it's a good interview. I've heard from a lot of people who are seeing it on you know on real TV, and they're like, "Wow, your book sounds great." Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to read it now and all of that stuff. So uh, you guys can check that out. Um, it's not on my website yet because I haven't been able to figure out how to take, how to download yeah, it. Yeah, you're like me. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. live. I don't we know. Were... I need to look into that this week. So Because um, you have nothing else going on. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, same old, same old Manchester while you are gone. You know, so, people get shot. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot. There's been a lot of shootings. There was a shooting again, I guess, last night over at Pine and Orange. Um, there's been a lot of um, discussion about sober homes and who hates them and what we're going to do with them. Right. And, um, I don't think you. Oh, I heard you guys got into some uh, apparently. Controversies yeah, apparently. See, everyone thinks any, I'm the troublemaker. Well, but. that's what I laughed. I laughed. I'm like, Carla's not here. Let the heck, somebody's going to. So, you know, since you weren't here, what. It annoyed the bejesus out of me because um, one mayoral candidate totally misrepresented the discussion that Victoria and I did have on the show. We were talking about changing demographics because if you if you're still my and I stand by my opinion, if you're focused on the way things were, if you talk about well back in the day, you know, in the '90s, and if everything's based on the '90s. We live in a very different world than we did in the 90s. I moved here at the first, I moved to New Manchester in the 90s. And it is a different community than it used to be. Some things are better, some things are worse, because that's what happens when things change. And I, I, I made a comment that French Canadian Catholics were not fleeing to Manchester. You know, like this is not the people that are coming to our community it's immigrant it's refugees and immigrants and we have a much more diverse population and we did not say once anything disparaging about french canadian catholics um yet one mayoral candidate <laughs> who apparently shall remain nameless but uh, i believe that um, was rich who doesn't <laughs> right who really doesn't deserve the breath that comes out of my mouth um like sent out these emails that we were like disparaging this whole all of the the older people on West Manchester and I, and I was like wow what did I say because you know how it is sometimes <laughs> right. you're like did I say something crazy that came out wrong and I went back and watched the replay the next morning and I was like no I didn't say anything we and and then the union leader ran with it because they didn't bother to watch like so when you read things in the paper, you're assuming that they're like informed of things. No, who assumes that? So if you're reading the paper and thinking that, I got some news for you. This folks. past <laughs> Sunday, they they printed a um editor, you know, a little letter to the editor from Victoria because she was like, because some candidate was saying that she took the video down because she was hiding oh, something. Yeah, I saw that. Except for it wasn't. It was still I. I I was like, I don't know what world we live in anymore because we're just literally making stuff up. So it was highly annoying. And apparently I got under some certain candidate's skin. 
Um, which is okay because now I've got a project. <laughs> oh no, no one wants to have me. Well, I no mean, one wants to be. I don't. I, <laughs> I don't like when people make stuff up. Yeah, honestly, I saw there, I saw there was a hula on my phone, and I was like, you yeah, know what? I'm on vacation. Gonna, yeah, yeah, well, I'll I, tell you all about it. it was I kind didn't of, check my I email. Just, I didn't. I don't think. Um, I don't think it went as it was expected for that candidate. Right. I don't think, I think they thought there when would be- When is the oh, primary? Um, it is on the, September 21st. Okay, so it's about- So um, absentee ballots are going out now. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to say vote early and often, but that's no. <laughs> only you vote You once. can't say that because people will take it seriously. No, um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Right? No, we have a few primaries. We have some really good candidates on um, on the more conservative side of the ticket. Um, I'm particularly impressed with uh, Nick Pigeon, who is running for school committee over in my ward in Ward 10. Um, he is... He, they did a thing on Manchester Ink Link on him. Um, he's like the organizer of the community gardens over at Gosler. He's a social worker. He's got a young family. You know, he's, he's got some kids in private, or not private, some kids in the traditional public school, some kids in the charter school. So it's like, he's just this all around great candidate. Um, and I, I'll be very interested to watch his, um, I have a sign on my lawn. He start, got his signs the other day and started to get them out, which is nice. Yeah, um, and I've been seeing Victoria's signs yep. all over the city. That's I nice. keep forgetting to pick, bring my screw oh. gun back from my other house where I'm doing work. In, in fact, we were picking up a friend to go to a function on Saturday night, and we were driving up, uh, I forget, the Lawson Street or Laxon Street Lawson, or something yeah. like that over at South Willow side. And, um, and I saw her sign at a house, so I, I didn't know where the person's house was. And I was like, oh, pull in there. That must be it. And it wasn't. We still had to go on to another house with a Victoria nice. sign. So um, that was nice to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is nice. I, I, I have, I'm confident that it'll be Joyce Craig and Victoria in the general election. There's no reason I mean, for me to think differently. I don't see how anyone, you know, not, not to be disparaging, but I'm like, who would vote for Joyce Craig again? Even if she is your person, like the city has not gone in the right direction. No. No, I mean um, spendings. Out. Victoria and I on one of the shows. Oh, we were they're talking to do the tax cap thing, right, with the schools. And oh, now well, gonna that's going to be. So or? there's going to be. There's a question, I guess, on the September ballot that says, "Shall we form a charter commission?" Because it's ten years already. But didn't we form a charter? Commission mm -hmm. That was a last school year? charter commission. That's why this is all this has oh, done this is, is made now. it more confusing for voters. So now we are at that. Every ten years, we're supposed to put. We're supposed to um, elect a charter commission. Okay. So why we had to have a special school charter commission last year when so that they can get the right. charter out from when under this the year is the, the regular cap. school regular charter commission. So there's there'll be a question on September's primary ballot that says, "Shall we form? Shall we elect a charter commission?" Then in November, from what I understand, there so then there'll be a filing period for people who want to run for charter commission. Um, not the Charter Commission from last year, the regular Charter the, Commission. But also last year's Charter Commission, just for folks following around, uh, you know, along back home, uh, was illegally Yeah, that convened. was a big hot mess. It was a big hot mess. There was a lawsuit. There were complaints. Yep. Everyone agreed on the plain reading of the words. It was bad. In order. Yeah. It was not legally done. But... But we did it anyways. But, you know, but then nothing came of it, but then even worse. But I think it didn't, nothing charter, came of it because they knew they were going to get their so, so then lawsuit. the Charter Commission had a recommendation for some school changes, right? Because it was supposed to be school related. <laughs> and then the aldermen voted to put a question on November's ballot, which isn't even the language that came out of that Charter Commission. It's just totally different language. So what was the point of having a Charter Commission if... We're not even going to use the language that they recommend. So in November, it's important for all of you who are concerned about taxes and spending and ha have little or no faith in um, our public school system here in Manchester since we can't seem to get anything accomplished. We have such a low success um, rate. Did I see that there's rate. like a 17% literacy, literacy yeah. rate currently? Yeah. And, 17% and we're down. people can't read and write. You know what you can't do if you can't read and write? Anything. You can't think. Right. So we've got like super low um, positive scores. Very, very low. We have um, hundreds and hundreds of students leaving because because they wanted their kids to be in a classroom and we were literally the last school district in the state who had to be forced 
to put the kids back in the classroom um, because we couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, we're, we're thinking of building some monstrosity of a high school when we're declining in, po in student population, like in the numbers of thousands of students. Um, the same entity that is, thinks these are the solutions to why kids can't read or write. New high school will ma make kids read or write, apparently, right? Those are the same people who now would like you to get a second property tax bill. How do you like that? A second property tax bill with no oversight by the alderman. I mean, so in no. some ways, you know, the the, the uh, burn it to the ground part of me <laughs> goes, well, maybe it would be better if people got a tax bill and they're like, what but am I wouldn't. paying? You know, six thousand dollars for if you know we the, have less than. But the reality is, is that although there's so many people who vote who are mil are not well informed. I mean, people who we, you have people who are renters who think they that the property taxes don't impact them. their rent when of course they do. That's why so those same people that are looking for you know subsidized housing and all these things, they're going to vote for the people who are promising to give them more things. So two, two for free. Um, so I was really shocked yesterday. I just happened to catch a clip on my feed of uh, Charles Schumer, right? Uh, federal level, walking across a foyer somewhere in D.C. And then he turns to the camera and he has a mask on and his mask says, uh, cancel student debt. So... You know, I looked at that and I was like, I was reminded of a couple of things. One was, do you remember years and years ago, we started saying, you know what, if, if you know, in America, the, the, the federal level of how it works is so corrupt, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, as, as people who come from, you know, I came from a different country and when we were discussing this with people in Honduras and stuff, it's so funny. Everyone else in the world knows their government's corrupt. Right. And uh, that they, and, and literally like in Honduras, they're going to open up this little enclave that's going to be entirely private with a private police, yeah. private courts, private everything. And I was like, how did they manage to do that? And someone was like, well, they clearly bribed the yep. mainland government. There's a super corrupt president president there, right? So we were like, yeah, I remember when I moved to America, I was like, oh, so in America, they call the corruption lobbying, right? <laughs> and then it's okay, right? right? And somehow we're all just okay with it. But then the standard joke became over the years, why don't we let them actually wear their sponsors badges on them right so you can say well right. i'm backed by big oil yeah, and yeah, i'm yeah. backed by you teachers know, union right right and, you know whatever your thing is so that at least we can be like oh, oh i get I it see who you you yeah. know who you work for because you're clearly not working for me because the middle class is just getting shafted from both ends right so when he had this mask that said cancel student debt. You're like, you are wearing it. I was like, wow, you are actually wearing your sponsorship stuff. Yep. And I was like, maybe that's the whole point of these masks is they were just trying to figure out a way to create a billboard to, to, to I don't know, to make it happen. So on the um, education here, what is interesting, and I see a lot of promotion, and I, I got mail, so I'm assuming other people got mail. So because the education savings accounts passed um, and um, the organization um, Children's Scholarship Network that the amazing Kate Baker um, is the executive director at, they have been given the contract to manage these savings accounts. It will be put out to bid at some point in the future years, but you know they needed somebody who had their, had their act together. Right. Um, but anybody who's watching this, if you don't think that you want your kid going back into the grade school or the high school here in Manchester that they were as assigned to you, um, you should really consider this because you can get pro anywhere from, I think it's $3,600 to like $6,000. It's like $4,000 on average to use differently. You can choose a different public school. Mm -hmm. So you could go to a different Manchester public school or maybe go to a public school in Auburn or you could send your kids to um, a private. So it's basically just true choice, right? Literal and that's choice. Sort of the thing, and I feel like we should always say this: we're not anti-education. I would like I'm education not even to be better. School. What I'm pro 
is competition. So if you have competition, mm -hmm. then everyone is motivated to do better. But right. because we have this education monopoly, it's just a drive to the lowest common denominator. Which uh, so we apparently we can up, see in our literacy scores. Right. So if we free up the market to say, hey, and maybe you're a teacher who's like, you know what? I really hate the red tape at this stage too. I wonder if I could start a small school where I only have six kids or right. 10 kids. I and teach I could fourth get the, grade to 10 you know, kids. I could get the, the let's say it's $6,000 following 10 or 15 yep. kids. You are making $60,000. Yep. You're setting your own schedule. Yep. You're setting your own you're, uh, you're curriculum. You're fulfilled in your... And you're happy, right? Yep. So that's you know where we're driving towards. And I think that's really important for people to understand. I was talking to my hairdresser yesterday, and, and frankly, our friends, you know, we met our South African friends in Honduras, and they have seven-year-old twin boys, right? Mm -hmm. And California has had a nightmare year. It's been really, really bad and bananas over right. there. And they were they they were like, okay, we're putting the kids back in school. And right. while we were in Honduras, they actually reinstituted the mask mandate for kids. And we were like, look, I don't know. Now you got to make a decision because, uh, you know, the science is coming out. Uh, the bacteria is really bad. It's actually causing bacterial pneumonia. No one's talking about yeah. this. The acne, the whatever, but also the psychological trauma and damage. So my hairdresser was like, you know, when I was talking to her yesterday, she was like, you know, my son has to go to school for the first time and I really just don't want to send him anywhere if yep. it's going to be this masking, not masking in between. And here's the other thing. You know how they say follow the science yeah. and we're like, well, apparently science is bunk because it keeps changing from morning till lunchtime, right? Right. But um, they, uh, I forget, I lost my train of thought I'm there, sorry. but. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, looking up texting things. and I'm like. No, oh. I'm not texting. I'm looking up something. <laughs> um, but so, so she was like, you know, she doesn't want to go back and forth with this thing. This is what I wanted to say. So I saw a thing online yesterday that had rules for masking for the children that now says if they do X, Y, and Z. So <gasps> oh, if they this comply, was the... we will let them take their masks oh, no. off for it 20 wasn't... minutes. It was, no, I saw this. It was um, some fifth grade class somewhere. They were raising money for some charity. And the, cl the team that raised the most got to have 30 minutes mask free. So if you but don't understand the logic, that so that is evil that is literally teaching your children they have to be muzzled unless and we're going to reward you by letting otherwise. you be unmuzzled While i was claiming like it's a medical issue right for you know so kids who so don't does get covid it. not spread when they're rewarding some team of kids for raising what so most anyway money? if you feel at all like if you have this inkling where you just trust your gut right if your gut is saying to you you know what, I don't really want my kids to have to go through this. I think this might be damaging right. or traumatic or whatever. It's not normal, I'll tell you that much. So then contact yep. Kate Baker Deemers, contact the schools, uh, the- The education, so if you go, scholarship, um, you could reach out to, um, you could Is reach out to called? the Department of Education Cation. and I'm sure they will direct you to where, but if you Google education savings accounts, New Hampshire or education savings accounts, Kate Baker, I'm sure it'll, you'll find the link. Um, and then remember, I mean, New Hampshire is the only state and it happened because of the activism of a lot of people who've been working very hard over a really long time. New Hampshire now has the second best school choice program in America. Yep. Uh, we would have made it the best, but there were compromises. Right, made, we had it. So You've you gotta, know, we got to keep pushing that. Yep. And again, not anti-education, not anti-teacher. We are pro people doing their job well. We are yep. anti the, or I am, anti the system that has created this weak, yep. bad, I just want to see Petri every, dish. I don't need, you, now we don't have children, we don't have our own children, but you know, I pay to educate children in the state. You pay to educate children. I just want every child in the state of New Hampshire to get the best education possible for them. That may make child A 
might fit perfectly in a public schools. I were, I did fine in public schools. That I probably would have done fine anywhere. But I also remember kids that were in my class that didn't do fine. Right. And, and they might have been better off in a private school where the class size maybe was smaller or there could be more one-on-one -on -one attention for them. Or, you know, them. like little boys are quite rambunctious and somehow people don't want that. You know, yep. school teachers don't want that. So either, you know, by the time they're 10, we're drugging yep. them. And then we're, you know, when they're 18 and they can't have a job you're like what, what what have we done so, so it starts from here and so we can do better and you and can so there's like on average four thousand dollars per student available for anybody who earns up to three hundred percent of the poverty rate so that's a family of four making seventy five eighty thousand dollars a year which is a lot of people that can't don't have an option now um you can also work with um children's scholarship network for a scholarship, scholarship to use in addition to that um and there's great places like um and if you're a business owner you can actually give a tax-free donation yes to the scholarship fund so that you can and that's tax-free so that benefits you yep. and it benefits your community um you know you give it to them and and then they they have kids it through get, to right. people who actually have a deep economic need in order to send their kids and, to um, a different kind of there's school. a place this is a friend of ours um sharon osborne um her husband is the majority leader up at the house. Um, Sharon's been very involved in homeschooling and education, and you know this is her thing. And she started a um, school called Latitude, Latitude Learning Resources, which you can find at latitudelearning.org. They're located in Derry. Um, it's um, enrichment learning options for students three and up. They have cooperative single interest or cross-curricular classes taught by parent, teachers, and field experts, learning center for high school schoolers to take classes, get tutoring, all these things that you can use with that, with that um, education savings account. So I think we're in a place where pa more parents have more options readily available and they should take that. And more choices is always good. Why wouldn't that be good? Um, <laughs> That's freedom, wanna, right? Before we run out, because we have two minutes, because... <laughs> like wow. that um, we get to talk about I right want to um, <laughs> remind people that West Manchester Day the first annual West Manchester Day which is being organized by We Heart West um, will be on September 4th over at Rock Rimmon uh, mentioning Nick Pigeon I know he's organizing a cornhole tournament to benefit oh, the community garden so that's awesome I think Dan and I'll have to yeah, brush up on our brush up on our um, cornhole um, and I'm going <laughs> to just make a shameless plug for Victoria Camp Victoria Sullivan's mayoral campaign uh, you can get more information about Victoria or sign up to get a sign or see how you can help by visiting victoriasullivanformayor.com. Um, the primary is on the 21st, just like, what, four weeks from now. Uh, so there'll be a lot going on between now and then, I'm sure. Uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, critiques, if you want to just yell well, at us, you know, whatever. Oh my God, um, yeah. Totally Manchtalk <laughs> at gmail.com is our email address. Um, we always look for input from people. Uh, you can always find our videos. Um, we do upload them. I didn't upload last week's, so I don't think. Um, I upload to YouTube. I don't know how to upload to Odyssey, but Carla takes care of that part. Um, and that's Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E, -E, which is like the YouTube alternative that is... Um, sensor proof. Sensor proof. So there's that. Thanks, um, that's guys. all we got. Try to stay cool. It's going to get muggy again as the week goes on. More rain. Um, but that's all we got. We'll see you next week. Take Bye. care. Bye.